This is your host, Pran Bharatiya, and welcome to TFR Newsroom. Gitpod has introduced open source project Open VS Code Server that runs the latest VS Code on a remote machine that can be accessed through a modern web browser. To talk about this project, we have with us once again Sven Eftinge, CEO and co-founder of Gitpod. Sven, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks for having me again. We have covered you folks earlier, but I want to remind our viewers what is the company all about. So please quickly tell us about the company. So Gitpod is automating development environments. Um, so we move them into the cloud and make them kind of automated and ephemeral. Like today, a development environment is something that developers have locally. So when you want to start on a project, what you typically have to do is um, go uh, download your SDKs, compilers, an IDE or editor you want to use, set up the uh, de development database, application server, things like that. And, you know, it's uh, people uh, use the initial days of their new job with this, but then there's also ongoing pain with that because as the uh, project evolves, configuration changes and so on. And then developers run into situations where they, you know, have issues, uh, there's so-called configuration drift. And Gitpod allows people to, like teams, to describe what this dev environment should look like in code. And then you check that into your Git repository and you get um, dev environments in a few seconds for any kind of project, branch, and situation you have. Uh if I may ask you, how is this approach of yours different from GitHub code spaces? Uh, it is actually not really different. Like um, GitPod and code spaces are kind of, you know, solving the same kind of problem. And um, yeah, we were like super excited learning that, you know, code spaces just do exactly the thing we want to do, um, helping us because what we saw is, like there is this pain in like in in the market, but it's super hard to convince developers in their daily habits. Um, you know, just um, moving from a local dev environment that you have full control over is kind of you know customized to your very personal taste, and moving that into something that is team owned and is streamlined and so on. That's that's a big change, and we now have uh, you know with GitHub and Microsoft is very strong believer and supporter of the same idea. Um, and, you know, we are now uh, working on convincing uh, the world about the, you know, the, the values this brings together. Right. I would put you in a bit tight spot. If I ask you, hey, why should a, a developer choose Gitpod over GitHub code spaces? Can you point some, you know, kind of advantages, benefits or edge that you have? Once developers have made the decision, hey, we want to, you know, do this modern kind of software engineering. We want to streamline our DevOps pipeline with this. Um, and they look closer, then key benefits of Gitpod are um, Gitpod runs containers. So that is more efficient, more resource efficient. And with that, it's um, generally faster and also, of course, more affordable, more, more efficient, right? Um, the other thing is Gitpod is open source. And then probably most important, you can run Gitpod, you know, on your own clusters, but also connect it to your existing pipelines. Like, you know, uh, you can connect it with GitLab or with Bitbucket or, you know, whatnot. What, um, you know, it integrates into your existing uh, pipeline. It's not a GitHub only thing. Um, and then there is something what we call is kind of ephemeral dev environments that means Dev environments are prepared all the time. When when someone pushes to Git, we uh, asynchronously already prepare dev environments, so it, they are sitting ready there for developers. So they don't have to need uh, they don't have the need to wait for them, which is a unique fi uh, feature of Gitpod. Um, but I, honestly, I think and I. It makes sense, and I hope that uh, Code Spaces is uh, going into the same direction. One thing when you're talking about uh, getting things ready for developers, what I do feel is sometimes developers end up wasting too much of their available time in a lot of unnecessary things versus writing the actual code or you know polishing it, which adds value to the company. So can you talk about how do you also 
enhance or improve developers you know workflow so they are much more efficient and their time is used to add value to the business instead of wasting it yeah i mean that's that's exactly the thing streamlining the daily flow right and so what happens is as an engineer i i go for instance to some jira ticket or so and i want to start coding and then what currently happens is ah, i have to go you know, to my local machine, and then I have to manually fetch the latest code and make sure everything builds and probably run the test and so on. And then, you know, I, I run into all these kinds of issues and every small issue is a potential kind of side tracker. But then also this is just, you know, from the experience, you just know, okay, I mean, would be great to code on this now, but I know there's so much um, struggle and friction until I get there. Oftentimes people just don't do that. And with GitPod, you know, this is automated. You, you, you think you want to work on something, you just press a button and then you have a ready set up dev environment that just works. And it works the same way for all the team members. And then even like when you've done your work, you don't leave a kind of a state that you have to maintain over the next year or something like that. You would just, you know, do this one task and then you forget about your dev environment because next time you get a fresh one, you always get fresh ones all the time with GitPod. Earlier you talked about open source, so that's when I want to talk about uh, the the big announcement, which is the uh, introduction of open source project, OpenBS Code Server. Tell me what is it? What problem are you trying to solve with it? Yeah, so the OpenBS Code Server is just the one small bit like that is the web IDE interface that you get by default with GitPod or also GitHub Code Spaces. Like the VS Code team has done a really great job building a very popular editor and they have changed the architecture so that it also runs in a browser server context. Unfortunately, they haven't released the, um, you know, the secret source you, you need in order to, uh, to run this uh, in that way. And since so many people ask how we do that, we just thought, hey, let's, you know, let, let's build a vanilla thing, make it a blueprint so everyone understands how to run uh, GitPod in, in uh, not GitPod, uh, open, the VS Code in such a context. And so, yeah, we released that. And, you know, that said, uh, by default, when you access GitPod, you get VS Code in the browser but you can access your workspaces also with the desktop version of VS Code. You can access it through SSH. You know, you can use, use VI or so. And then also we are working with JetBrains on a um, integration with their JetBrains IDE. So with, for Gitpod, it's super important that people understand this is just your very professional dev environment, all the tools you need running in the cloud to be automated. And you can access that with your favorite IDE. It's an open source project. Can you talk about whether it's going to remain a company project? What kind of plans do you have to also attract a wider community around it? Uh, who are you targeting with this project? Um, sure, the, like we are targeting with OpenVS Code Server um, individual developers who just wanna um, use an IDE in the browser with their whatever machines they have running somewhere, but also adopters like we've been working with um, a bit of with our studio who are uh, you know, have an interest of running it in their um, context but also with likes of uber or shopify who have internally kind of something similar to gitpod or code spaces already and you know building building this and also need an interface for that um, so these are kind of the uh, the groups who are using that but actually long term i think uh, we would love to see Microsoft or the VS Code team um, taking this over, and we are happy to, you know, to um, help them maintaining that. It's not a lot of code, but I think ideally it would belong into the uh, the main VS Code uh, project. Right. I mean, my question was that what is the intention behind releasing it as an open source, which could have been a pro, I mean, like not proprietary, but you know. So uh, what I want to know from you is that, what was the driver behind making it open source? Why would we do that business-wise? No, uh, yeah, with OpenVS Code Server, 
uh, why you released as an open source? What, you know, uh, as you mentioned, you, know, you would like it to be part of that. So I just want to understand the whole strategy behind releasing it as an open source project. Okay. Yeah. So uh, for us, it's, uh, for one, it is important that everyone understands that Gitpod is not about the web IDE. We, we got a lot of confusion about that. People think, oh, Gitpod is VS Code in the browser. And it just, you know, by extracting this and making making clear to everyone, like, no, like running VS Code in a browser is a commodity. That's not, you know, that's not an interesting USP or something like that. Everyone can do this, and this is how you do it. Um, we get that message across. But then also lots of people who are looking into the space, you know, they can start adopting this small project, and then they, you know, might grow out of this eventually and see, okay, now I need more, you know, security and orchestration and scalability and user management and so on. And then, you know, they, they grow naturally into Gitpod. Um, and also for adopters, you know, uh, if Uber at some point thinks, okay, you know, it doesn't make sense to build this ourselves, they, you know, they, they might have seen um, Gitpod or also code spaces and then and, and adopt one of those. Right. And uh, most of what you folks do is open source. And I also feel that when you release something as an open source, it kind of breeds confidence in the users because they do know that this is not, they can always uh, uh, work on the code and there's a scope for wider community around that. They can also, if they see features, they can go in there. So it depends on what kind of community you have built around it. So it does breed a lot of confidence among users. They do know it's not getting logged in there. So that is also a very good factor to just, you know, increase, you know, uh, adoption of a certain project or product. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Also the transparency, like developers really want to see the code they are running and they are relying on. Um, it, it, yeah, it just makes a lot of sense. And then we also get contributions already. So we don't have to maintain this uh, alone. We, you know, this is also in a sense like, you know, open source makes makes a lot of sense when you have stuff that is something like a commodity, you know, you 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 join forces there. Right. And, and the best thing is that, as you mentioned, a lot of companies, their engineers might have better ideas. You know, this is the whole point of open source that you don't have to have everybody on your payroll to improve your code base. And, and you know, uh, you benefit from each other. It's amazing. Uh, Sven, I think from this announcement's perspective and just to understand Gitpod and the comparison with code spaces, I think I have everything that I was looking for. Is there anything else that you would want to feel, hey, you know, from this announcement's perspective, this is also important if we should talk about it? Or do you think that we have covered everything? I think we have covered everything. It's just, um, you know, it's so important to me that everyone understands web IDEs are not the problem anymore. Like the VS Code team has solved that very well. And there is an open source solution. Everyone can use that. Um, and built on top, like, I think that's also important with, you know, open source, the industry at large can, can share this common ground and build in interesting stuff on top of that, right? We don't have to all work individually, basically more or less on the same stuff. Of course, as you're talking, you know, there are a lot of, you know, consumer of these projects, but, you know, there may be also a lot of folks who may want to get involved. So what is the best way to get involved with OpenVS Code Server? Um, go to the GitHub repository. There, like on the README, we already help you how to, you know, get started into it. There is, of course, an easy to start dev environment using Gitpod. So, you know, running it uh, under development is one click away for everyone. And I think that's the best start to, you know, contribute or uh, try out things there. Sven, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about OpenVS Code and also uh, give us a comparison between, of course, Gitpod and GitHub uh, Code Spaces. Uh, it's open source, so the beauty is there are more choices. More choices are always good. So thanks for those insights. And I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you.